Motorcycles are all about physics. When we're riding, we exploit the laws of physics to our advantage. One of the most important parts of this, and one of the best ways that we can get the most out of our motorcycles, is weight distribution. When you're riding down the road at a steady pace, your weight will be evenly distributed over the wheels. You create a weight triangle between the wheels and yourself. Your body will be here, and the majority of your weight will fall into this triangle, sitting on the seat, slightly forward lean angle, weight evenly distributed between the front and the back of the bike. When you accelerate, inertia causes weight to shift to the rear of the bike. That puts more weight onto the rear wheel, which in turn gives you more traction at the rear wheel, which means you have more grip, you have the ability to accelerate more. An extreme example of weight transfer to the rear wheel would be a wheelie. You can get enough weight onto the rear wheel, you put down enough power, you can lift the front wheel off the ground. When you are slowing down or braking, weight transfers to the front wheel. That means there's less weight at the rear, which means there's less traction available at the rear, but at the same time there will be more traction available at the front. Proper braking requires exploiting that fact. When you get your weight moving to the front of the bike and pushing down on the front wheel, the forks will actually compress. The front wheel will actually squish, the tire will squish into the ground. It'll make a larger contact patch between the rubber and the road, which will give you more traction, which means you can add more braking power because there's more weight on that tire, you have more traction, there's more ability to put more stopping power into that front brake. So you can squeeze a little bit more on the lever, which transfers more weight to the front tire, which makes the contact patch even bigger, which means you have more grip, so you can apply more brake and apply more weight to the front tire and get a bigger contact patch and more traction, which means you can apply more brake to the front tire and continue on adding more and more and more. This is how we get a motorcycle stopped. The rear brake isn't totally useless unless the rear wheel is off the ground, and ideally, when we're trying to get stopped, we don't want the rear wheel in the air. The stopping power for a motorcycle is going to be between 70 and 95% front brake. On a bike like this, almost all of your stopping power comes from the front wheel. You're going to get about 90% of your braking off of the front tire using your front brakes. If the rear wheel does stay on the ground, there's going to be about 10% of your stopping power left there. So you want to use both brakes, but you have to understand that as the weight transfers to the front tire, there's less weight at the rear wheel, which means there's much less traction at the rear wheel. So as all that weight moves forward, and you can keep on applying more and more front brake, you also have to moderate the rear brake. If you use too much rear brake, as all the weight moves to the front tire, you'll end up with a sliding rear wheel. And that's not very helpful when it comes to getting stopped. Now this bike, as you can see from this little dial, this bike has ABS. There's a, a pickup sensor that just looks and just reads these little notches here to monitor the wheel speed and if the wheel all of a sudden stops moving while you're still traveling the computer will kick in and moderate your braking so that the wheel doesn't lock. 
This is the first bike I've ever owned with ABS, and I haven't even really tested it out yet. I just got this bike. So I'm going to go out and play with that soon. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm, I'm quite interested in how exactly this bike will react to overbraking. But with the ABS, as long as it's functioning properly, you don't really have to worry about overdoing it with the brakes. That's not to say that you don't have to practice good braking, because ABS may not always be there to save you. So even with ABS, it's still important to make sure you're braking well, you're stopping properly, and not counting on the computer to save your ass. Learn to stop properly and keep the ABS as an emergency backup for when things don't go right. Ideally, even when you have ABS, you should never actually be using it. When it comes to getting a bike stopped as quickly as possible, the best that you can do is having both wheels right on the verge of locking up. A wheel that is barely turning will get you stopped the fastest. Using just the front brake, because that's where the majority of your stopping power comes from, completely neglects the fact that some of your stopping power comes from the rear brake. Getting the most out of your brakes means using 100% of your available stopping power, and that means using both brakes. When it comes to getting stopped as quickly as possible, you need to use 100% of your stopping power. That means having both wheels on the verge of locking. That is the best that you can do to get your bike stopped. If you're just using your front brake, you're neglecting however much stopping power is available from your rear brake. On this bike, it's 10% or maybe even less of your stopping power is going to come from the rear brake. But in an emergency, that 10% matters. When it comes to getting stopped so that you don't hit something, an inch can be the difference between a crash and not crashing. So even though almost all the stopping power comes from the front, you still want to get the most out of the rear brake as well. Get the bike slowed down and stopped as quickly as possible. Both wheels on the verge of locking, that's full threshold braking. That of course means feeding more and more brake onto the front wheel and starting off with as much braking as is available at the start on the rear wheel and then easing off of the rear brake as the weight transfers away from that tire onto the front tire. As the weight moves to the front of the bike, the rear wheel gets lighter and there's less traction available. So it's a tricky thing to do and it needs to be practiced a lot. Just because you can do it once, when you're in a parking lot and practicing, doesn't mean you don't need to keep practicing again as your life goes on. It is a skill that will deteriorate, and your needs will change based on surface, and the bike, and the conditions, so it needs to be practiced frequently. Well, this bike does have ABS. There are bikes that also have integrated braking, where if you apply the front brake, it activates a little bit of rear brake as well, and vice versa. Now, those systems are unique, and you need to know if your bike has it and how exactly it works. Some of them will apply rear brake when you use the front brake lever, but not front brake when you use the rear brake. Some of them will apply front brake when you use the rear brake lever. When it comes to these sorts of systems, it's important to know exactly what you have. 
And another note about the ABS is that some bikes have ABS as an option. Most bikes would have one of these rings that you can see there. Most bikes with ABS have that. That is the standard way of setting up the ABS. Some bikes do not have that. Harley Davidson in particular, I'm not sure how exactly their ABS is set up, how the sensors work, but they don't have those rings, or at least I haven't seen those rings on the Harleys. Some Harleys have ABS as an option, but the dash still has an ABS light, even if you didn't buy the ABS model. There are people out there who think their bike has ABS because it has the dash, but when it comes down to it and they're screwing up their braking and needing the ABS to kick in, they don't have it. It doesn't exist on their bike. They lock their wheels. It is very important for you to know exactly what sort of a braking system your bike has. Now, if we look at a bike like my Victory, a large, heavy, long and low cruiser, you're still gonna have the weight distribution to the front of the bike when you're stopping and you're still going to want to use that front brake start in with pressure add in more and more pressure as more and more weight moves forward but you're still going to have a fair bit of weight on the rear wheel so on a bike like this you'll have 70 to 80 percent of your stopping power coming from the front and you'll still have 20 to 30 percent of your stopping power at the rear it's still weight moving away from the rear wheel as it transfers to the front which means you still have to be careful with the rear wheel you need to make sure that you're not overdoing the brakes uh, as the weight moves away from the rear you've got to be easing off of the rear wheel to keep it nearly locked but not quite and then smooth application of the front brake to get the weight transferred to the front and then continue more and more and more weight transfer as you load up that front wheel and get more grip and add in more brake and get more grip and add in more brake. The key to that whole equation, whatever bike you're on, is smooth application of the front brake. You need to be, I'm pointing at the clutch here because you can't see the front brake. You need to be adding in smooth braking and steady braking. You don't want to chop at it. You don't want to get onto the brake and then back off and then get back on again because that'll make the front end pogo. And as soon as you let off the brake, the weight starts to transfer off of the front wheel again. And then if you grab a bunch of brake again, you'll be overdoing the available traction. As soon as that weight moves away from the front wheel, you have less stopping power again, so you have to start the whole process of smooth braking to get weight transfer to get the front brake to work properly. The trick is smooth, steady, increasing pressure on the front brake. Whatever bike you're riding, smooth and steady increase the pressure, get the bike stopped.